Hey everyone, can we turn this dark gray myrtle beach shell into a beautiful shiny pendant? Let's find out. Hi everyone, this is Clayton from the Sand and Shore Shop, and I take things like this and turn it into stuff like this. Come and watch me make shiny stuff. Hey everyone, this is Clayton from the Sand and Shore Shop, and previously found this shell in a container full of other shells that I brought back from Myrtle Beach uh, quite some time before I even started the Sand and Shore Shop. And I decided, yeah, let's see if we can cut this one into a, into a shiny. So let's look at what we got here. The blue pointer is back. So here, around this edge, we've got, it looks like just the deep gray color, which isn't a bad thing. It doesn't seem to be decomposing, which is also a very, very good thing. The backside's white, and I can see some layers in here. There's also a few layers on the outside here, too. And this is a... Uh, I don't know what to really say other than this is just a shell. So we have some gnarlies here, some bristle worms or sponge gnawings. I think what I'm going to do is take and trim this flange off here down to this gnawing, like that. And perhaps just round off this edge here, sort of that way. That might give us a very pleasing look. So let me get a pen here. So what I'm saying uh, is, let me just sort of bring this down like that. So if that gives you somewhat of an idea, I'm going to just bring it right down through there. And then just round this corner off. Zoop! Zoop! There, we got the zoop. For some reason, the zoop wasn't working on this pen. I hate it when the zoop don't work. So I can easily do this one on the wheel, but this one, not so easy. I might have to get my uh, Dremel out and grind that down. And I may just do that right now. Oh, oh. Oh man, cord. Almost didn't have enough cord. Okay, this is a grinding diamond grinding wheel. Very inexpensive one. And of course, this is a very inexpensive Dremel tool. And I have, you know, I have very good Dremels and some Fordham tools. But quite often I go back to these little buggers. Let's see how loud this is on the... Woo, yeah, it's loud. I'm going to grind this down. I hope that's not too terrible loud. I'll see if I can fix the volume. Yeah, it creates a lot of dust, too. I have some airflow going to pull the dust away. If not, I would be using a respirator. And if you notice, it's this machine bogs down pretty good. And that's not a bad thing. Truly, it's not a bad thing. And I'll tell you why. If you have a powerful tool with a great bit of torque meaning a whole lot of power and you have a tendency to how would you say overuse your diamond wheel or whatever you're doing because you have all the power you want you can't stall the motor out this really really inexpensive super cheap dremel type tool which doesn't have a whole lot of power forces you to be more gentle and for some things that's really good if you're drilling holes in in uh, rather thin shells you don't want to have more power than you need. And even if you, you know, adjust the speed on a, on a very powerful tool, you still have more torque on there, and you can break the stone when you start to get through the other side. The shell, it's a shell, not a stone. Well, no, it can be either a stone or a shell. So with this type of very underpowered Dremel type tool, the motor will bog out before your uh, piece of material that you're working on will break. So I'm going to hold this down here because it, holding it up in the air, that's kind of painful. Where is the brush of destiny? The brush of destiny, see? Another thing about not being very powerful, it doesn't blow a lot of dust everywhere. It still blows dust, but maybe not as bad. I wanted to look at this. I just sort of brought that down somewhat. But the more I look at it, the more I think I'm going to have to follow those original lines so I can highlight this, I can highlight 
this curvature right here. So I think my original idea, cutting it down more, is going to be what we what we need there. All right, so I'm going to start this back up, and maybe I'll start it back up. There we go. Definitely need a little more ventilation than I have. If you're doing this at home, always wear a mask or have serious, serious ventilation. But you don't want to be breathing this dust in, because this stuff will kill you. I mean, silicosis and kind of lung creeping crud that you can get, that stuff will kill you. Stuff will kill you dead. I mean, there's not too many other ways of being killed other than dead, but you, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, we're getting a pleasing shape there. I don't think I want to go down too much deeper in there. Maybe get a little finer grinder out and cut that in there a little bit. And I might just do this edge while I'm here. Why is this not working? Ah! What is... Oh! Oh, looks like the switch is going bad. I, I expect more out of a $9 piece of equipment. You know what I mean? There it is. Right, now I'm going to trim that down that way. I could do this on the big wheel, but I'd rather show you. Now I'm afraid to turn it off in case it won't go back on. All right, so there's what we're getting so far. I may do a little bit to this edge, but I'm going to do that on the wheel instead of with the Dremel. This lip here will have to be trimmed off. And I will do that with a, a more aggressive wheel later on. But for now, I'm going to take this over to the polishing area. Not the... I'm going to take this over to the diamond wheel and trim the edges up before I start working on the face. So I shall be right back. All right, I'm back. And I trimmed that up just a little bit. I didn't round it off too much more. But as you can see, it's got some really dark colors to it that might show up pretty nice. So I'm going to work the face a little bit and then show it to you before I get it onto a top stick. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see, the shell's starting to look a whole lot different already. I worked the face down just a little bit, up towards the heel and down towards the point. And it had sort of that petroleum-type smell of decomposition, but not horribly bad. And you can see the gray up top is starting to decompose a little more than it is down here, but down here we still have some colors. And the best way for me to proceed with this is to get it onto a dop stick. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So we're going to dop this before we go any farther with it. Okay, I have the shell on a stop stick, but I'm going to try something new. I've never tried doing a shell with wax before. So I'm going to take this over on the wheel and see how this works out. Well, I'm back pretty quickly. Um, well, first off, the wax isn't going to work too well. I was afraid it wouldn't. Let me wipe this off. It's way too wet. I was able to get the shell polished down somewhat, or cut down somewhat. Uh, it's got some nice grays up here. And we have some colors here, and I don't want to go too much deeper. Because we're going to take that color out. I may eliminate, or have to get the Dremel and grind this part out a little bit to get this black away and to smooth this up. So I may just do that right now. Well, I am going to do that right now. And then I'm going to re this. Okay, be right back. I'm back. Okay, well, I trimmed up where I said I was going to trim up, and even around this edge. And I dropped it. And I smoothed, took off some of the back, too, while I was at it. I may take a little more off of here. As you can see, what while we... If you probably notice it's a little bit shinier than it was a while ago because I decided to hit this these edges a little bit with a um, the super aggressive polishing wheel, and that was just to see, you know, to see what I was gonna if I was gonna get some shininess out of this, and it appears that it is gonna be gonna be a pretty shiny shell, but we still have a lot of facets across the face. Let me get it up nice and close. You can see there are a lot of facets across there that have to be smoothed out before it'll get a very nice glass-like shine. So I'm going to have to take and dop this on a stick with some epoxy before I can finish it. So I will be back here as soon as I can. 
Okay. Got this stone docked on there, and I... Th it's a shell, not a stone! Got this shell docked on there, and we can start on the... Eliminating of the facets, which is also co-polishing, and I got myself a different bottle. Look at that. Hmm. So, the technique here is pretty much the same as with a stone. You just go over the face of it, take off any faceting that we may have. There's a little bit more facets on the shell sometimes because of the irregular shape. Oh, uh, look at that. This glue is not holding at all. <sighs> you know what? We're going without the dop stick. Now I got it stuck to my finger. Maybe we'll just use that to our advantage. Yeah, then I come down with chemical burns tomorrow. Oh my, can't get it off my finger. Help! Okay, this isn't going to work. No, I can't get this. <laughs> All right, I'm back. And it's stuck to the cloth and everything. I'm back. Got some lacquer thinner. Cleaned that off pretty well. Cleaned off my finger pretty well. I'll just be doing this one. Unstopped. What we got. You know, the fat. I still got sticky stuff on my fingers. Facets are coming out of there pretty well. I may cut that down a little more right there and really make that a, a really cool shape. Okay, this is not as easy as if you have it on a stick. Okay, as you can see, stone's pretty dry. But we have shiny flying everywhere. So pretty much got uh -huh, pretty much got the facets out. And that's what we were working working for here. Well, I did it. I went over and I took that bit out, and I'm actually very happy I did. Because now it's got a crazy looking shape. And I think that taking away that little bit of sort of dead area made it much more shapely I guess all right I'd say that's sanded down good enough so now on to the thousand grit and I got to clean off the stone I shall be back and uh, this is a shell not a stone I'm gonna clean off the shell and I'll be back I am back I'm sort of crying I don't know <sighs> Alrighty, thousand grit. Hmm. All right. Well, look at that. That shell is starting to polish up extremely nice. Very earthy gray tones to it. But beautiful. So I'm going to take and get, put this on the cerium oxide wheel and see if we can make a shiny out of it. All right, I'm back. Let me clean this up. And there are times. When I'm doing shells, <clears throat> that I get surprised, and this is one of those times. That shell, the th richness of those colors, just went through the roof as I started to polish it. I mean, that this one, oh, this is gorgeous. I didn't get all of the outside... Uh, ripples out of the shell the ones that are in there naturally so this colored portion is just a slightly bit satiny but if i go over that i think a little more with the cerium oxide i can even bring more of a shine out there but you'll notice some areas are super shiny and some are satiny in there and sometimes these shells just astound me i i don't know what else to say this back side, I'll probably work it just a little bit with a, a buffing wheel. But this shell is an absolute win. 
Some of these shells from Myrtle Beach have these really deep colors to them. And they're more earthy gray tones than they are bright purples and reds. But in some ways, they can be even more beautiful than those bright colors. No one can say that that's not beautiful. So if you like the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And I'll be making more videos like this. Thanks for spending some time with me, and have a good night.